<laughs> we will persevere. Uh, you are the last one. Yes, my lord. How much time do you want? Um, I need five minutes, but I would appreciate it if you don't knock because I have dyslexia. So it will make me start rapping instead of delivering so my submissions. So you take the five minutes, please. Yes, my lord. Your name? My name is Wanjiro Mwangi. I am the 12th petitioner in consolidated file E65 of 2024. And together with, my with the 11th co-petitioner, Dr. Iboso, we asked to be enjoined as interested parties in this matter. My Lord, unlike most people in this room, I want to disclose that I have a learning disability or ability called dyslexia, so I ask for time not to rush me so I can articulate myself properly. My lords and my lady, I would like this, uh, I'd like this court, I would like to ask this court to deem myself and Dr. Iboso being properly on record for the sole reason that in other courtrooms we have made submissions and been told that we are not properly on record and would like our submissions to remain on the record. My lords and my lady, I only have five questions today that I want to task to the judiciary and to the members of the, and to the public and to everybody else. Question number one, the judiciary on trial. My lords and my lady, the, questions, the, the only questions you are on trial for in the eyes of the public is a, sim is a simple one. Is the judiciary truly impervious to the reach of the corrupt and the political class, locally and internationally? If the answer is yes, the Bill of, the Bill of Rights must be respected and upheld. For this, I rely on Article 159.2. Justice shall be done to all, irrespective of status. Read together with Article 27.2, which states, equality includes the full and equal enjoyment of all rights and fundamental freedoms. Question number two. The Constitution on trial. My lords and my lady, the second question the public will be asking is when our Constitution is on trial, because it is no doubt on trial, will the judiciary bend to the insurmountable polit political pressure or will jurisprudence, the Constitution, and the rule of law prevail in such adversity? If the answer is yes, then the conservative orders must be stayed. For this, I rely on Article 27. Every person is equal before the law and has the right to equal protection and equal benefits of the law. Question number three, the laws on trial. My lords and my lady, the third question that is important to the public is that once a court clearly states that a right is absolute, as this court did on the 23rd of October 2024, then the public will be interested to see and know if the court will uphold its own directions. If the answer is yes, then this court, this court must respect and uphold its own directives and guarantee all the petitioners, especially, especially those who prayed for conservative or injunctive orders whose applications have not been heard and determined, including us laymen, the right to a fair trial as specified in Article 50, which reads, every person has a right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the, ap by the application of a law decided in a fair and public hearing before a court. Read together with Article 27.3, women and men have the right to equal treatment, including the rights to equal opportunities in political, economic, and cultural spheres. <clears throat> question number four. Immunity of the office of the president is on trial. The inadverted question we as a society have to ask ourselves is a moral one. Does the court have any real authority to successfully reverse the impeachment and reinstate regarding Ashagwa? Based on the truth we know, the truths we have been shown, and the truths we are constantly reminded of by the political pandemic we have been suffering, what confidence does the public have that if the conservation orders are lifted, the court will have any real authority to successfully reverse those orders? Then, under the same assumption, the ascension of Professor Kindiki will succeed after, in, after that in a manner of what we expect to be ours, despite the numerous legal, ambiguous questions, uh, ambiguous queries about... <laughs> Gazette notices in the middle of the night and a lack of IBC commissioners to vet or validate the public participation in that manner. The answer is no. The court will be unenforceable, will be unable to enforce the, on the office of the president as enshrined in our constitution and affirmed by the Supreme Court. The court does not have jurisdiction to force Kindiki if he's sworn in to recuse him, to uh, impeach himself. That is the real conundrum in a nutshell. And is, a sim and is as simple as the deputy president assumes office, and if the president is unwell, does the judiciary in fact find the impeachment and end if the... I sorry, let me just say it again, please. The real conundrum in a nutshell is as simple as this. If the deputy president assumes office, and then the president is unwell, and the judiciary does in fact find the impeachment process was flawed from the National Assembly due to violations of the Constitution, what then? 
Will the acting president impeach himself as a deputy president? Can he even, even, is it even possible and who would enforce those orders? The conservation orders cannot be lifted if they will be rendered a nullity, null and void. For this, I submit Article 27. The state shall not discriminate directly or indirectly against any person on any ground, including race, sex, pregnancy, marital status, health status, ethnic, ethnic or social origin, color age, skin, color, age, disability, region, conscience, belief, culture, dress, language or birth. Question number five and my final question today is our system is on trial. My lords and my lady, on this final note of mine, I humbly stand before you as a lay person <coughs> with, ugly, with arguably what I hope to be some of the best legal minds in this country. As our nation is once again at the precipice of a revolution, as the spirit of our nation is reawakening, I submit to you, that, I submit to you one of the most progressive documents in, in the modern world, our constitution, a document which guarantees even terrorists due process, whose, words, whose, uh, whose presum preamble starts with, we the people of Kenya, and ends with adopt, enact, and give this constitution to ourselves and to future generations. It is time to take our place. It is time for the constitution to prevail. It is time to no longer allow political urgency to override judicial processes. Our country will still be intact in 30 days, it, and it will still be intact in 60 days without a deputy president. Our, con our, con our constitution went so far to envision not only the vacancy of the deputy president, it planned for the eventuality of both the president's office and the deputy's office being vacant. Kenya will be fine. We, the people, will be fine. Let the natural cause of justice prevail. It is what we envisioned. Uh, and, and it is what we envisioned for an independent judiciary. Thank you, my lords and my lady. I submit the floor. Thank you.